Sian Chalker and I am going to explain a simple helicopter uh, that your students can make that will get a reasonable time and it's a good practice for them to start building. This is the template and from this template you notice there's an upper rotor and a lower rotor and that template gets will be students are going to cut that out and this is the cutout of the upper rotor and they need to make sure that they cut out all these little notches. This notch here, the one down here, and these two sides here. I'm not going to explain exactly how to build it, but this is more to give you an idea of what the uh, helicopter is going to look like. And the lower rotor, you're going to, again, you're going to cut out the same thing. The lower part is trimmed and this is trimmed and here and there. Those are very critical. Then they're going to fold these up. And the best way to fold those up is to use a block of wood because you want to make sure those are folded just on that line. It's very important because that helps with the the way the um, rotors are going to be, the pitch of the rotors. So those are going to get folded up. This is on cardstock, not plain paper, so those are folded up. So that is the template for it. Now I'm going to explain the finished product and here we have the finished helicopter. Let me move these out of the way. This is the finished helicopter. You'll notice that you know, we have the top and the bottom rotor. The bottom rotor is stationary. It's easier for the students to build a only one rotor that actually rotates, especially for a first time. So we have the bottom rotor, and you'll notice the rotors are different pitches. They're a different direction. If you notice, that's why we have these different angles here. You saw that how they're different because they're they will end up being the bottom rotor. Do not mix up the bottom rotor over and the top rotor. So the bottom rotor, we have it a little bit glue. It's glued to the motor stick, and it's a little bit, probably about an inch, uh, inch and a quarter from the bottom. And this one, I like to put the hook at the very bottom. It gives you a further distance to be able to stretch your motor and um, this also then will give you a spot that you can hold on to the bottom, the students can hold on to the bottom of the helicopter before they launch it. That's the bottom. On the top, we have a pigtail that we, there is a video online of how to build, make that pigtail. And you've, actually I will take this apart so that you can see this. There are a couple different options that you can do for the thrust bearing, but this one has a pigtail that is thrust bearing. I'm taking the helicopter upper rotor off. So there's the pigtail on there. And you want to make sure that the end is glued, it's hanging out a little bit over the front of the, um, the tip of the helicopter. Also, you want to make sure that it is, this is parallel this way, and that it is parallel to this, so that this is a straight line along with your motor stick, and that this right here, where your rotor is going to go, I'm sorry, where your motor um, hook is going to go, is going to be straight, parallel to this. Before I hook that back on there, I'm going to show you the upper rotor. There are several parts of the upper rotor. So you've got your shepherd's hook right here, and you have your beads, which help with the friction, so that you've got, because you've got wood here, you've got the beads there to keep it from, so it'll, it'll turn freely. Then we also have got this hooked, this, the motor hook is glued to the bottom of the rotor, and it's glued to the top and it's hooked over the edge and you can't see it because it's covered right now. We've done a good job of covering it. I put an extra piece of wood right here over the motor hook so that it will not turn 
independently, that it will keep the rotor turning. Okay. Then the rules call for a disc on the top. This disc is a basic, just a circle out of sheet wood that I cut. Um, and I actually cut two layers. I like to put two layers in there because the kids have a tendency of them, these breaking a lot. So when you glue the two layers together, you want to glue them cross grain. So this top one, the grain is going this way. The bottom one, the grain is going the opposite direction. It gives it more strength. On the underside, a simple way to attach this, there's lots of different ways, but a simple way to attach the disc to the top of the rotor is kind of make it like a table. I've got two little pieces of 1 16th balsa in there to make a little track. Then I took two pieces of 1 16th and made, attached them to the top of the disc, or the bottom of the disc between those, that little track and have a little space in between. And then you can easily put this over the center of your top rotor and glue it, just glue it down, and that will turn with the rotor. Now, one thing that's very important is that you have this, actually I'll turn it this way, let's see, that this disc, this upper disc part and the motor hook is all in alignment. You don't want it crooked because you don't want it, that'll give wobble. You want to also make sure that it is perpendicular, totally perpendicular to the top of the rotor. Uh, a lot of that stems from how well you have put this centerpiece in when you built your rotor. You want to make sure everything is definitely squared off. Otherwise, you're going to have wobble in your, uh, in your helicopter. I'm going to put this back on and show you how to hook it in here. So we're going to hook the shepherd's hook into the hole, get it into the hole, slide it around, and you can hook it onto the inside of that, turn it, and you've got it attached. And then you're ready to wind up your motor and hook it to the back and to the front. And then you're ready to fly. There are other options for the pigtail. There are a couple other options that you can use for that thrust bearing. And I'll show you those. If you can't make that thrust bearing. There is an aluminum one which is very similar, except it's made out of aluminum. The motor hook goes through the front little hole here, and then it attaches similarly to the way the pigtail did, a, uh, work, it way, work its way into that. So that's one. And then the other one, if you get frustrated and can't make those pigtails, although it does, pigtails, I always like those. Once you get those mastered, you're in pretty good shape. And then the other one is this type, that this gets glued to the motor stick, and then this part gets glued to the, you put the wire, the motor hook through this hole, and with a shepherd's hook at this end, and that then slides into here. So this part right here will be attached to your rotor, and this part will be attached to your motor stick. So those are other options that you can use uh, to attach your rotor. Some people will put a, th a thrust bearing at the top and the bottom. That would be a pigtail or one of these other thrust bearings at the top and the bottom so that both of the rotors rotate. Uh, for ease at the very beginning, you may want to just go ahead and use one at the top and have the bottom stationary. Um, if you do the bottom stationary, you want to make sure that this is perpendicular. And when I, it may, this may not look perpendicular, but what you're looking for is you're looking for the top of the rotor. 
the top spar of the rotor and that to make sure that's perpendicular to this. It looks a little askew because of the angle, the pitch of the rotors, but this is square. You can even see from the bottom it's square too, to this, to the motor stick. All right, this is a basic one. The, this kit uh, is available, is going to be available through Wards uh, for 20, um, the 25 26 season. And you probably should be able to make maybe eight helicopters out of it. Um, good luck with helicopters this year.